Vane, where are the videos? Uh, you've been working on them videos, right? <laughs> oh, of course, the, the videos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, you're probably here because you're either thinking of pulling for Ganyu or you wanted to see what Ganyu is capable of, especially now that the meta has shifted to Dendro Impact. Well, in this video, I'll be showing off my Ganyu, which I pulled all the way back on her first banner in 2021 and answering some of your questions. We'll take a look at her different builds, make some upgrades along the way, and talk about what I like and dislike after playing her for so long. Two things before we kick it off. If you're enjoying my content, the number one way of supporting is by dropping a like, subbing, and hitting the bell. It's a free and easy way to support the channel. Channel, there's no pressure and you can unsub at any time. Secondly, speaking of supporting the channel, this video was sponsored by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm with over 800 lawyers in 49 states. There are certain things you should do when you get in an accident. Check you're okay, get a police report, contact your insurance, and make sure you get legal representation. Injured and don't know where to start? With Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch. You can submit your case details, sign contracts, contracts, upload documents, and medical records all from your cell phone. In eight clicks or less, you can submit a claim to Morgan & Morgan. And if you're ever injured or in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. For more information, go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law, that's pound 529 from your cell phone. Thank you again to Morgan & Morgan. All right, welcome back, Bully. So we're gonna jump straight into it and I'm gonna show off my Ganyu after 800 days of having her. So her stats currently, 2000 attack, 120 EM as she falls asleep behind us 63 crit range 236 crit damage 0 er that's a little bit of a problem and 46 percent cryo damage currently she's using a skyward harp though we have a bunch of different weapon options here i don't have all of them but we have a lot of her good options as well as her free to play stuff as well that we can talk about later i'm currently using the wanderers set as well as constellation zero talents 10 7 9 quick rundown before we get into all the details the comp i usually use her in is morgana usually with some variation like something like this or even switching out Rosaria for Rosaria but with white hair <laughs> now that I finally have Shenha. Check out that video by the way if you haven't seen it on the channel yet. Before we get into anything else, just want to remind everyone if you're thinking about pulling for her, did you know that canonically during the Archon War she was eaten by a giant monster but her fat dumpty uh, was enough to block its throat, choke it to death, and that's why she's alive now. Mm, so if that was ever a reason to pull for a character, just keep that in mind. Anyways, let's talk about her strengths and weaknesses and what I've really noticed over the last two years, two years and a bit. First things first about Ganyu is her main advantage is her range. For me, when I first got her, playing the overworld, having a Ganyu helped a tremendous ton, especially because I had big skill issue back then and I didn't really know how to dodge. I still don't. And I didn't know how to do rotations properly. So having a one single attack that did a bunch of damage from really far away helped a bunch. She's also generally really easy to play. Yes, her E and Q have some sort of skill requirements or timing stuff, but really you just point and then you shoot and then things kind of die. If if you don't miss, that is. <clears throat> also, if you're on mobile, this might be a deterring factor. So something to keep in mind. Aiming is a lot harder on mobile. I'm sorry to all those mobile gamers. I don't know how you guys do it, but that might be a reason not to pull on Ganyu. Other than that, we've talked about it a little bit just earlier, but her weapon choices, she's got a bunch of great options, especially if you're free to play and you're thinking of getting her as your limited five-star character. You know, you're investing a lot of pulls into it. You want to get some value out of it. So both her greatest free to play weapons are craftable which is a really good thing. You've got the Prototype Crescent and you've also got the Inazuma Craftable. I've forgotten the name of it. Let's go find out what that is. The Hama... Hama Mama? You know what I'm talking about. The, the Kamehameha? Something like that. The Hama Yumi, that... <laughs> That's the one. So you can pick either between this or the prototype Crescent. Both are really, really good for her. She scales great with both the stats as well as the passive. And also, have I mentioned, outside of that ridiculous waistline, she also has a great design. It's super, super cute. You can hear a little jingle of her bell while she runs around. Just everything about her aesthetic looks absolutely amazing in my personal opinion. Definitely one of the best characters in terms of just cohesiveness in her skills, her appearance, and I love her personality in the story. We definitely have too many overworked <laughs> female characters in the plot, but I do appreciate her a lot. Okay, other than that, she's got a couple unique abilities, and this is actually the perfect spot to show it off. So, you see those pigeons over there. Timmy, you want to see a magic trick? 
<clears throat> that was one of the <laughs> key considerations I actually had when I pulled for her at the start. You know, having skill issue before, I definitely needed to cook a lot of food. Don't ask how I have 1,046 sweet madams. Timmy doesn't need to know the answers, but let's just say Ganyu had something to do with it. What are you looking at? What else does she bring to the table? Well, outside of having a nuclear button that can just delete all the birds on the server in one second. Oh, missed that shot there. That's what, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with the birds here? What did they put in the water in Mondstadt? These, these birds are kind of strange. Anyways, outside of that, you've got her E, which is a taunt. Gives her some energy. Super pretty. Also her burst. Let's show it off real quick. Has a massive AOE. If only I could find some enemies to get some energy back. <clears throat> Technical difficulties. Give me a sec. So like I said, her burst has absolutely huge range. You drop a little taunt in the middle. Ow, okay. Hit, hit the other thing, not me. And everyone's just getting hit. AFK gaming, you know? It's very comfy, very nice. Applies a decent amount of cryo. And there's also this thing called quadratic scaling that I'm not going to get into. But big numbers, a lot of people together, even bigger numbers. Something like that. <laughs> you can watch a, I don't know, watch a 1010 video or something on it. Outside of that, is she still strong? This is a question that comes up a lot, especially for Ganyu in 2023. You know, we're playing Dendro Impact at this point. We've got all these different worlds that have come out, different cities different landscapes, different enemies. When she came out, there was only two. There was this little chunk here. I guess this is a pretty big chunk, but this chunk over here. Since then, we've got all this crap as well. We forgot. Uh, we had lizard people. We've gotten everything, okay? The game's changed a lot. So is she still good? And the answer is, yeah. She's actually still really great in a bunch of different types of the content within the game, whether that's Abyss, whether that's Overworld, and all the stuff in between. And the reason why she's still good, actually, is she has two unique playstyles. One is Freeze, one is Melt, and they're kind of do the polar opposite of each other which helps pad out her weaknesses so with your freeze comps you do something like this where you group up all the enemies okay now they're on fire this is not what i wanted ideally you group up all the enemies and then you freeze them they get stuck together and there's no way out they're, they're pretty screwed and the weakness of this playstyle is you don't have great single target damage it's good but it's not great against bosses especially if you can't freeze them so the opposite of this is Melt, where you're essentially doing really ridiculous single target damage with your charge shots, something easily like 50k on a Melt, and then you've got your Bloom that explodes that does maybe like another 50k. You can easily do 100k damage every 2-3 seconds with your Ganyu. It is a little janky to play but it's super strong as well. And before I go on any further, another question that gets raised a lot, especially if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about it already. Should I pick Ganyu? Should I pull for her or should I pull for Ayaka? Ayaka also recently had a rerun. In terms of the two, they're actually pretty similar. They're different, but they're pretty similar. Uh, both used in very similar kind of comps. Though, what the hell is happening to me? I have never seen that before in my life. This game is not working today <laughs> between the bird and whatever that was that was kind of strange so for ayaka she's really similar works great in the same sort of freeze teams that you would usually run but for me it, it comes down to two things one is do you like their design do their personality their playstyle? she's melee she is a lot more focused on landing that one big burst that does crazy damage and you kind of get everyone stuck in it and you just nuke everything the second thing is what sort of gameplay do you play do you play a lot more of this you play overworld what are you going to use the character for regardless i think you should have one character but for me personally i like ganyu for the overworld just because the range is really easy and comfy to play and you can kill things largely before they even see you so if i wanted that chest over there i run halfway and i just start sniping it down and i'm good to go ayaka you gotta get close though her dash is helpful it's still a little buggy but i find her personally a lot stronger in the abyss than ganyu just because it's easier to play press the e press the q mash some auto attacks and you're good ganyu you have to be a little bit more careful than that but otherwise still really good as well What the hell are you doing, sir? Get down from there. All right, so I think this is a perfect time to talk about the different builds that I have for my Ganyu. So starting with the artifacts, actually. So currently I'm using Wanderers on her. This is usually your best in slot if you're playing Mel Ganyu. The four set passive increases chance shot damage by 35% if you're a bow user. Pretty much you just have it up all the time. It's great. The EM also helps if you're playing Melt, so you're doing more reaction damage. Generally, just a really good set. You get it from killing bosses and you can even reroll into it as well with the scam box. <laughs> what is it called? The strong box. That's it. Though you do get scammed a lot. 
Other than that said though, you can also run Blizzard Strayer, which is probably your best if you want to play Freeze. The only reason I'm not using it now is because I've done this weird thing where I'm somewhere in the middle between Freeze and Melt because I'm too lazy to change her artifacts. But ideally, if I was using her Melt, I would switch this to an EM piece. And if I was playing her Freeze, then we would use Blizzard Strayer and have attack here, cryo damage, and then crit damage, ideally, because you get a bunch of free crit rate from the passive here. There is also, technically, you can use Shimanawa's for melt. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. The attack is not as great as having EM, and then also just having to lose the energy and have these specific criteria. It's like, you gotta use all your charge shots in 10 seconds, and Ganyu takes a little bit of time to charge up, so it just makes it a little bit jankier to play, in my personal opinion. It can do more damage, especially if you have better subs, better stats overall, but for me, Wanderers is the way to go. Also quickly in terms of the weapons, we talked about it before, but free to play, prototype crescents, you get the billets, you refine it, it's good. There's also the, um, oh God, I've already forgotten the name. The Hamayumi, as well as Amos, they're all great. Amos you can get from the standard banner. In terms of the other weapons, I've got a few here. So you've got Aqua, you've got Skyward Harp. You also have things like Thundering Pulse as well as Polo Star. Ultimately, they're all great. Polo Star and Aqua tend to be a little little bit better for Ganyu in general, but as long as you're balancing out your crits so you're not over capping, they're all good. She just, she's great with pretty much every single bow. You can even use the battle pass one, though I would have recommend the craftable. It actually does a little bit better and you don't need to spend money, but they're all the options are there. You can even use Elegy if you want. If you want to play this weird support Ganyu, you can run Emblem for more energy recharge for her and you just keep dropping bursts. So she's really, really versatile in that sort of way. Let me show off her freeze teams a little bit more. So if I were playing her freeze, ideally we would want something with high attack and why not show off her free to play options in terms of artifacts. Let's have a look at my set that would normally run on her. If I was playing her freeze, this would be my Ganyu setup. So weapon, prototype crescents, artifacts, four piece blizzard strayer. I'll flash them real quick. I'm using an off piece flower because it just has more crit damage. Uh, the main thing for her is crit damage and ER because you get a bunch from the set, you get a bunch from her passive and cryo resonance. So here I've got an attack sans, ER, crit rate, crit damage, onset cryo damage, goblet. This is pretty awful piece. I'm not going to lie, but it's on set. And then this is the circlet. So two attack rolls, one crit. It, <laughs> a bunch of flat attack. It's it's pretty rough out here. But overall, 2.2k attack, 40% crits, which gets us all the way up to 100 once you have all the bonuses added in. 200 crit damage, a little bit of ER, and your cry damage bonus as well. So this would probably be the freeze team that I would run. And usually where I would use this sort of comp is in AoE situations. So rather than going and finding a group of mobs, which I will kill probably in one charge shot, I've gone to the abyss, but I would essentially suck them up. Drop a Kokomi Jellyfish, a Ganyu first, and they just all, they all kind of die. And you don't really use your brain, you just kind of point at them. When the bursts come up, you use them again. It's pretty, pretty simple generally. And uh, you just kind of watch them die. <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's really straightforward to play. You can also use things like Kazaha, Sucrose to substitute for your Animo. The Sucrose is a little bit janky in my personal opinion. You can also substitute the Hydro for a bunch of options as well. And the last slot is just kind of flex. Usually you run another Cryo unit for the Resonance though. But this video, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about Melt. Melt is in a super weird spot right now where it's actually a little bit better than it used to be. It used to be a little bit more jank. But now we have some standard options and we got some weird options. So the standard option, I think original Melt Ganyu, you would run something like this. You would run Venishong Ling, they're applying the Pyro. You would run pretty high energy recharge on both so you wouldn't have to spend too much time funneling. They're here to put a bunch of Pyro down. Zongli is here to shield you up and block interruptions so you don't get knocked out of your charge attack when you're charging. And then Ganyu just kind of blasts, right? But now there are some really weird comps as well. So what you can do is you drop the Banner Burst and then you drop the gene burst. As enemies essentially walk in and out of the circle, there's the pyro that swells onto them and they all have pyro on them. So that's one way to do it, but things have gotten even more different since a couple other characters have come out. Let me show you. We've got things like Dea, which is a little jank. Personally, I wouldn't play this. She's here to kind of replace a Zhongli and a Bennett, but I'm a not a big fan. Her ICDs are just a little bit too jank that you can't consistently melt. Her shield resist isn't that great, so she's here, but 
I wouldn't recommend it. You can also do stuff with Kazaha, the Kazoo Kid. You put the Bennett Burst down, you do the Kazaha stuff, EQ. Now everyone has Pyro, it refreshes every couple seconds. It's good to go. And then finally, you have the Dankest of Dank. Not my favorite, but you can do it. You can make Burning with Nahida Bennett and they perpetually keep refreshing the burn and then you just blast that way. So for example, you do this, you hit them with the Pyro and now they're burning. So you hit them with this, or well, ideally the, the enemies wouldn't die in one hit, but it would perpetually refresh the Pyro and the, the Dendro coexisting. And then when you hit it with the Cryo, then it refreshes again and you can melt the next shot afterwards as well. It's not working here because they're dying in one hit, but you get the idea as well. It can work. So there's some strange builds she has now, but let me showcase her a little bit more in the overworld, in some of the abyss. And this is, uh, this is my Ganyu after 800 days. Personally, the main thing for these two characters, you want really, really high ER, so they can constantly have that up. Zongli, I actually usually run with a Favonius as well, some more particles. Ganyu, you can do pretty much whatever. The Aqua is actually probably what I'm going to end up using. I know you want to balance the crit rate, but Aqua is just kind of cracked. <laughs> so I would have recommended. In terms of the artifacts, let's see if I can make her even better. I've been neglecting her a little bit. I got a bit late. Easy, but let's have a look. One, two, three, four crit rolls, two EM, two to three attack. I mean, it's just pure damage. This is five crit rolls, two attack. So this is down one crit roll, but you get an extra attack roll and two EM. So I think that's better. Here, this piece is honestly super solid outside of the two defense rolls. I think that's what I was using with her before. Here, I got a little unlucky. Look at all this HP. Look at all this flat defense. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tragedy. I'm not going to lie. But you know what? We have a few EM pieces that look promising. Let's see if we can fix her up. We've got this, which has four lines. Two of the stats suck, but we've got attack and crit, which are nice. Here we've got ER and crit damage. Not bad. Here it's got attack and maybe a potential good form stat. But I think we start with this piece. Let's see where we can take it. We're looking for crit and then attack. Okay. Ask and you shall receive, apparently. Okay, attack, okay. Second place is not bad, but how about some more crit? So far, four useful subs though. I'm pretty happy with that. Can we make it seven? We've got three more rolls, essentially winning three 50-50s back to back. Knowing my luck, uh, it's probably not gonna happen, but please, one can dream. Okay, I'm a believer. I'm a believer, we're, <laughs> we're going pretty well. Look, even to show my commitment, I'm gonna drop this piece straight in. We're gonna see what happens, okay? Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, the crit. The crit is kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, how about, how about just another crit? Okay, I'm asking for a lot. I know, but like, how, wouldn't it be insane if you just gave me one more crit roll? Okay, it had to come back eventually, okay? Good luck had to end somewhere, but I'm not complaining. That is sick. That is amazing. We finished with six damage rolls and we got EM. So that's great. Switch that in. We get our crit Damage circlet, though crit rate wouldn't be bad either. We probably will use one of these artifacts I already have. That's crit damage and has a crit rate sub. But I did notice I had this piece. Crit rate on the top, attack and crit damage on the bottom. If it rolls EM or ER, this could be pretty good. I'm optimistic once again, please. What did I just... Okay, well, I accidentally skipped it, but it's defense. <laughs> Damn it. Why did I trust? Why did I believe? Just open myself up for pain, huh? Well, this looks disgusting, but I guess it's not bad. But we can steal Tignati's piece, which I think is what I'm going to do. So this is my 800-day Mel Ganyu. Let's have a look. 1.5k attack. Doesn't that look a little small? Well, I guess the good thing is we have Bennett, right? <laughs> it looks like it's really scuffed, and it is to some degree. But the good news is the second you drop Bennett down, she's gaining 2,000 attack attack easily okay you're gonna be at 3.5k attack you don't need more what you need is em and because i have it you can see here melt is gonna do 50 percent more damage or 55 percent more we have 58 percent crit rate 265 crit damage and we have cryo damage bonus as well so she's gonna hit like a truck the second we get the banner burst going we get kazaha going and we have omni shred with zongli as well so let's go test this out on some bosses there wait i forgot to do my daily commissions give me a sec we'll be right back i got a friendship farm with gun you speeding this all up. But this is what I was talking about before. Ganyu should make all of this really, really quick. Where are you guys? Well, what I might do quickly, just because we're here, we don't want the EM sands now because I'm not doing any reactions, but where is it? Let's just temporarily switch back to the attack one for a sec. But you can see here, pretty much I just walk by. They're still dancing. They're like, what is happening? They're like, hmm, where's this enemy? And they're dead. 
Thank you for these headbands or whatever they are. Armbands. We're out of here. On to the next. Also, yes, I finally switched my commissions to Sumeru. I was always a little scared because I felt like all the other regions take forever to finish their commissions, but actually not that bad. And you know the mushroom bouncing one? Kind of fun. Also, quickly, let's gun you wings. It's these ones. Don't, don't debate me, okay? Others, they look nice. Yeah, I agree, but these are better. What are they? Oh, they're trying to hit the lotus leaf. Well, I'm just going to be over here. You guys do that. You guys have fun. That's the thing with Ganyu is that really none of these other characters even matter. For the overworld, she is a one man killing machine. And the last commission, we're absolutely speedrunning this with Ganyu. Also, don't judge me. I know my exploration percentage is super low. I see chests and stuff everywhere. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Send help, okay? Oh, <gasps> it's the mushroom jumping one. This is my new favorite commission. I'm never going back to Mondstadt. We're jumping on mushrooms all day. He's just too good. Ladies and gentlemen, he's just too good. All right, but let's go show off actual Mel Ganyu. Also, I don't know why Zhong Li's on life support, but he he'll be fine. Yes, his joints are crackly. Yes, if you sneeze on him, he will die, but he'll be fine. He'll be fine. All right, place your bets. What color dragon are we getting? As long as it's not cryo. Shit. <laughs> I think that's one cryo boy. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So you drop one of these, Kazaha, and then we just charge up. I forgot to switch. Can we switch back? I, oh, of course. Of course you can't change it during combat. What am I trying to do here? All right, we're back. It's still the cryo one. Let's try this again. Wait, I haven't, I haven't changed the artifact yet. I was about to just do the same thing. Sometimes I wonder if my brain even works. All right, so let's see how much attack we get when we Bennett burst. So Zongli, please drop that fat shield. Bennett does his thing. All right, Ganyu, 1.8K attack. What? Gives 120% of his attack. His attack is 850. What? It should give like a thousand. Oh! Why Why did it do that? We will never know. 82,000? Okay, I, I just need a crit. That's the problem. I can't crit, but if we could crit, oh my god, then it's over. This stupid lizard is gonna get its butt beat. Let's try that again. Okay, we'll do the setup again. 130k between the two shots. Oh yeah, he's dead. He's really dead. It was a 50k chance shot and an 80k bloom. That's that's a lot of damage. That's 130k. Checking my math in my head. I know I worked out the crit damage numbers wrong one time. All the comments were like, this man cannot add and it is true. He cannot add. All right, let's try something else. Grandpa, don't break your legs. He's fine. He's fine. So we do a Bennett. We do a Kazaha. And then... Oh my god, 160k between the two shots. Whoa. Okay, it's worn off now. We just have to be a little bit quicker about keeping that buff up. But other than that, kind of ridiculous, no? What resist are you getting? Cryo resist has increased. We'll see if that's a problem. We'll see how much of a problem that really is. Okay, you're down. I'm shooting too fast. I The, the cryo overrode the, the pyro. Still though, even when I'm not melting, we're doing 50k a charged shot. Like the combined charge shot damage, it's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. All right, let's let let's let's try again something a little bit tanky. I'm trying to get my Bennett just a little bit more energy recharge, you see? I mean, 12% is 12%. We're taking it. How's that? 230. 230 is a bit better. Even worst case, you could probably switch out this. So you're dropping your buff a little bit from 670 on your weapon down to 450. So you're losing what, 220, 250 attack after the burst is factored in. But you're getting a bunch of energy recharge. So honestly, this might even be a better option as well. Uh, let's test it out with the current energy recharge though. I'm feeling hopeful. So let's run this one back. Let's try this again. So we want to shield up, bend it in the middle. Okay, and then Ganyu, do you think? I am not in the spot. Okay. Oh <laughs> my god. I'm kind of feeling it. Yo, can you stop, sir? I can't even melt you because you're you're in the air. You're so annoying. Let's shield up one more time. Is that enough energy? It is. So one of these. One of these. And then Ganyu. Don't don't I can't even see my number. Okay, 80k. Did she just die? 
No, we're fine. Okay, so that's the thing. These guys are stupidly tanky and do so much damage, but hopefully it's not a problem for our Bennett Kazaha combo. Okay, shield up. And then... 100k? 60k? That's it. Tank busting with the melt, crowd control with the freeze. Ganyu is Ganyu's pretty good. <laughs> so that's uh that's pretty much my Ganyu after 800 days. She's still a super strong character, really versatile. I still try to play her when I get the chance, though I don't get it very often. She has great free-to-play options, and hopefully this video was either entertaining or helpful, and helps you in your decision making on whether you want to pull for Ganyu or not. Thank you again, bullies, for watching till the end. Make sure to like sub and hit the bell if you haven't already. And you you can go to this bouncing is so obnoxious. I keep phasing up and down. It's like an elevator. Anyways, you can find me streaming several times a week on Twitch and you can stay up to date by joining our community discord. Link to all my socials in the description. Love you all. Take care and I'll see you on the next video.